right. Is there any, let's call a meeting to order. Is there any public comment or additions and changes to the agenda? This meeting is being recorded. All right. I have a comment. What? Where's Denise's camera? I plugged it in. It doesn't work. <laughs> you got to activate it probably. Well, the computer said that it did that, that it installed it, but it doesn't seem to be working. So I unplugged it. Cliff and I are going to do it later. So that maybe it's the next time. All right. And I got, I do have it plugged in or did, I did, but if okay. I am, but if I have it plugged in, yes. I can't be a box. <laughs> what would you be? What would I be? I don't know. All right, Toby, you're up. So uh, the question is, we've been working on the final design for the George Road culvert. Um, I actually invited Doug Newton to join us tonight. He's not in the, in the meeting yet. The issue is that to run the, the, the issue is that the culvert is so wide that we can't run guardrail because the cover over the guard over the culvert is only about a foot, a foot and a half deep, which doesn't support the long span that that would be required to uh, put a guard regular guardrail on the culvert. So the last thing that I had talked with Doug about was <clears throat> we could use Jersey barriers on either side of the of the culvert to put up a protection for people driving off into the into the stream. And that's what we wanted to talk to you about, whether you would approve of that or not approve of that, and um, what your thoughts were about having Jersey barriers on that culvert. So, yeah, go ahead, John. Is there a, is there a waiver ability to, that we could seek a waiver? I mean, it's only like two feet two foot drop or three foot drop right no it's no it's uh, no it's like 10 feet what uh, am i thinking about by the farm yep how can it be 10 feet it is i mean the culvert itself is like six feet tall and there's there's two feet of uh, invert and then there's a foot and a half of cover over it so what do you uh, mean what is what is invert <clears throat> Invert is the the buried part of the, the, essentially the culvert has to be buried two feet into the stream. Wow. And then it has to have a six foot opening on top of that. So, um, so it's six plus, it's six plus one to the, to the water level. John, I, so yeah, so engineering yeah. wise, essentially the design requires guardrail. Yeah, I know that. That's why I was asking if there could, is there an ability to seek a waiver? I mean, personally, I don't think we should be putting Jersey barriers up as a permanent solution. Well, I didn't think so either. And that's why we're bringing yeah. it to you guys about how to handle yeah, it. So there has to be some kind of retain, there has to be some kind of ASHTA approved guardrail over the culvert on both sides. Can you on put a Jersey barrier up and then um, to kind of hide it, put up? The, old, the guard, the regular guardrails. You're not understanding, Denise. So if you have the Jersey barriers up, can on the facing of the Jersey barriers, you put up our normal guardrail standard, the weathered looking guardrails? Um, that, that could be a possibility. Um, so late earlier today, Doug called me back and said there might be another solution, which would be to pour a concrete base across the, the sides of the culvert and in, put the guardrail into that base. But he was going to check whether or not that was ASHTA approved. Um, and I haven't heard back from him and I was hoping that he would be on here to talk about that directly. Would that be part of, would we have to pay extra for that or is that, would that be part of the grant? Well, I mean, there was there's money in there originally for guardrail. If we have to do Jersey barriers or any other concrete work, it's going to be more. But um, you know, when you throw a budget out at a particular project and you either come in uh, over or under, um, that's just what happens. I, I don't know yet. Um, you know, when it goes out to bid, whether the bids will be higher or lower than what we've put in for the grant. I mean, the grant has a, I think it's $160,000 in it. Okay, so Toby, that, what, 
Toby, state. what are the what are the when when you were working with with Doug, what what other options are there are there any other options? It sounds like you did you you did you and Doug have done this analysis, you looked at the issue, you saw the problem, and and I mean Denise's idea is an aesthetic. It addresses the aesthetic issue, if I understand where you're coming from, Denise. But from an engineering okay. standpoint, are there any other options? Um, no. So it either way, it, so the problem is there's no way to anchor a guardrail over top of the culvert because of the long span of the culvert. You know, as it as as it is, you know, twelve. Four, I don't know the exact dimension. I'd have to look at the plan, but it's too wide to put. A single rail across between two posts. The posts don't have any place to, to be. So we have to do something that would anchor um, protection over the guardrail. So the first solution was Jersey barrier because that's an accepted um, barrier that meets the standard of highway accidents and to prevent you know cars going over a bank. Um, the second option that Doug has come up with is a possibility of pouring a concrete base and having a six inch lip over, over the edge of the, you know, at the, over the culvert and then having steel guardrails like normal inserted into that base. Um, but he, he hasn't been able to determine yet and I haven't heard from him back from him whether or not that's an approved uh, solution. So that's kind of along the lines of what I was suggesting with the still being being able to somewhat camouflage it with the normal guardrails that we're all used to. Um, yeah, it, it sounds like it is it it sounds like it's not exactly a camouflage. It's a way of anchoring the guardrails um, atypically. Well, if you, if you look at the the design drawing that I gave you, the guardrails come up to the edge to the end of the concrete barrier. Then there's two pieces of concrete barrier, Jersey barrier, and then the guardrail picks up on the other end. I think what Denise is talking about is putting metal bar that travels in the same direction, covering over. It's not structural, it's just covering to the, right. that big surface right. of concrete. Yeah, right. I'm talking about aesthetically. Right, you're still going to see the big lump of concrete sitting there like a Jersey barrier. Yeah. And what and what Doug's new idea is is a way of it. I think what I might be repeating exactly what you said, but laying a concrete base like on the road or on top of the culvert that would allow you to anchor the the guardrails in a more traditional way, and they are the solution, not the Jersey barrier. That that would be correct. It would be the concrete base poured to to hold the posts for the regular guardrail. Rose it, wants it, to say something. Toby, what about our timing? We have a little bit of leeway or flexibility on the timing um, for Doug to fig uh, Doug Newton to figure this out. Yeah, um, and uh, yeah. So I mean, essentially, we were bringing all these these issues to you so we can look. I mean, th the design and most of the stuff is ready to go into a bid package, but it's this piece that we were not comfortable just making that decision on our own and wanting to share with you guys since it's an aesthetic issue rather than a technical issue no you did the you did the right thing bringing it to us because we all know how much input we get from folks about guardrails it's a pretty big pretty big issue so yeah. my other question then is toby so this would technically probably increase the price and i still go back to the issue that i raised several weeks ago you know the state says okay yeah you got the grant money now we have to come up with how much money from callus or is it all in kind and what if we do all this work and the grant money doesn't come through well i've talked with sean about that issue and sean uh, 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 reassures me that that money's already spe specified for us and we're not going to get short changed on that grant amount so the only thing the only risk we would run would be an overage of our estimated cost of the production of the uh, of the work um, in most parts, um, it's a pretty straightforward um, project. I mean, other than this particular wrinkle, it's just all, hopefully it's all covered in our estimate that we put in for the grant to begin with. 
And that, and, you know, that estimate was done by Doug, our engineer. Right. I mean, we've, you, we've used Doug for years and years, so. Right. Um, now, who would do this work? Well, whoever went out to, wh whatever contractor won the bid. So, you know, in thinking about all this new guidance for crews and out-of-state companies and stuff, doing projects, um, how would that play into the RFP? Well, not, I mean, I don't think it would make any, any significant dif difference by the time this goes out to, um, go to bid and uh, they start work on it, we'd be into July or August, probably at the earliest. And so there'll probably be a lot of relaxed issues as far as manpower and crews and stuff. Um, but are, are the crews generally out of state or are they in-state crews? Uh, depends on who bids um, and which bid we, I mean, last time we did a, a group from Hardwick, we've done a group from Barry. I mean, a contractor from Barry. We've done, you know, mostly local guys anyways. Okay. So it's, yeah, not, just, it's not as if people are coming from out of state. Okay. Cause there's, you know, I'm just thinking about all the stuff going on. We want to be careful about um, money and we want to be careful about making sure that we're following the VOSHA guidelines, whether it's our own crew or whether it's out of state. Well, that responsibility is on the contractor's part, not ours. If it was a, okay. All right. That's their responsibility to work within the guidelines of the state directives. Alfred, did you want to say something? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess what I would add was that that's sort of a low traffic road. It's not in the village like we had in North Gallus was in the village where people walk and they enjoy that scenic value. Um, there's not as much traffic down there and there's even less people walking, whatnot. So that's kind of why we thought that Jersey barriers might be okay. Um, there are, there is one other option that's not cheap, but we could build the road up to allow for more cover which would then allow for the posts to be used as usual. But, you know, you'd have to build that road probably four feet in order to, to make that option work. Oh boy. So, if we do, you know, it, go ahead. Uh, if we do the, if we do Jersey barriers, uh, the, the first way, not the, not the new today idea, but the, but what you were saying originally, Toby, is there is thinking again about cost can would denise's i aesthetic idea of guardrails in a lining the the jersey barrier would that have to be done contemporaneously or could that be done down the road no that can be done in the future and actually you know if if you didn't care exactly f about continuity you could probably use uh, reuse some guardrail we already have just i mean you just have to put mounts mm -hmm. onto the jersey barrier and we can you know find some straight pieces lying around behind the shop that we could do that in, you know um yeah that's a thought. it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be done because the jersey barrier is the protective that's that's what's required but the other guardrail is that's a function that the town can take on itself at a later date. Then we would want to be very clear. So when we start getting phone calls about the ugly Jersey barriers, um, that we have a plan to supplement those with um, our traditional guardrails, just maybe at a little later date. And, and that we really didn't have a choice from an engineering standpoint right, right. now. Right. John? I would I would be in favor of um, still getting um, this reply from Doug Newton to see whether or not the concrete thing would be um, in compliance. You mean the concrete thing with the post with the guardrails stuck into them? Yeah. Yep. Okay. John, you wanted to say something? So, so Toby, uh, um, just for clarification. My understanding is the Jersey barriers can be placed and they do not need to be pinned in any way that will be compliant with that's, the ASTA codes. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Okay. So do you need another, another, 
Another thing I might add is that, you know, if we did use the Jersey barriers, we could always paint them, you know, some, some color that would not be concrete. You know, you could paint them green or paint them brown or something that's more appealing. Yeah, you could have a Callis Elementary School art project. That's right. Graffiti. That's right. Graffiti. right. You, can, you can also get them poured in different types of aggregate or rough aggregate so they don't just look like a concrete slab. There's yeah. other options. All I, all I can think of is those ugly things on the interstate, you know? Well, that's what they are. No matter what you say about them, that's what they are. <laughs> yeah. They look like New Jersey. Right. That's where they came from, John, right? right. They invented them. Yeah. Yeah. So do we need, do you need us to make, uh, Cliff wants to say something. I'm just curious about something. It wouldn't change the aesthetics, but uh, was there any discussion of using a different barrier, an F barrier or something like that, Toby? Um, we've looked at other barriers. Um, the, the, the issue is they, the, the barriers have to be hooked together securely. And the Jersey berries are really the only ones that you can put in a row and hook them together and get the, the standard. There are other sort of eight foot barriers and stuff, but they don't interlock with each other. So they're not, a, they, they don't work across that longer span. Okay, thanks. And we also looked about, you know, doing some impressions or something to dress up the Jersey barrier, but we've talked to, uh, the concrete company and that form, they can't do anything with that form. They can only do, you know, some kind of colored or different uh, surface, um, but the shape and the size has to be the, the regular molded size. Well, I like Alfred's idea of probably that they could possibly be um, tinted with a color of some sort and that we could eventually put up the typical rusty looking guardrails to kind of help with the aesthetic effect because people are going to notice it. There's no way around it. Right. John? Um, okay. So, so I will continue to pursue with Doug the other option and let you know um, via email as soon as we can, if that's an acceptable way to deal with it. Otherwise we'll deal with uh, using Jersey barriers, adding guardrail in the future and maybe coloring it depending on what your choice of colors are. John? So, so Toby, just again, I just want to make sure I'm understanding everything correctly. Um, so this is, you know, kind of one of the finishing touches. So you can, the project can move forward, move forward while you're evaluating options, right? And then when we get to the point where we're put surfacing over the culvert, that's when we need, before then, we need to know whether we can do the concrete application and whether that's a can be approved. So, so the thing is, if we put the RFP out, if we're specifying the cost, the extra cost for jerseys as opposed to guardrail, that has to be in the bid that we put out for people to to reply to. So we can so change colors or surf. So what? So what did? What was the grant award? Is it one hundred and sixty or one hundred and eighty? I'd have to look at it. I think it's 160, but I haven't looked at it in a while. Yeah, I don't know. For some reason, I was thinking 180. But yeah, so we would want to know in the RFP, you know, how much more it's going to cost than what we were granted. Right. And then again, we need to be thinking about as we get closer to the end of this fiscal year, um, you know, what's the money situation look like? Because this project wouldn't be until next fiscal year, correct, Toby? No. That's okay. right. It would be in the next fiscal year because we wouldn't start till Ju after July 1st. July 1st. Okay. And this is a 10% match? I believe Toby? so, yeah. In kind or just? Yeah, yeah. It's, in, it's in kind. So we could, as part of the match, maybe we could install the Jersey barriers and that way we could, or whatever the finish work is. I'm just speculating. To meet no, that. that's true. So essentially, if whatever the final total is, um, normally we actually participate more than 10%. And we always just get, you know, essentially, sometimes we're over, sometimes we're under. Um, it, uh, we did the paving uh, in the uh, at the post office in East Callis, and we came in almost $7,000 under. So, yeah, you know, it's just one of those things where you take your best shot at it, and it's hard to tell whether or not you've hit the high or low point in what you've estimated. And by the, and just again, um, 
this is we have to pay the money up front and then we get reimbursed that's correct it's a reimbursement so just want to keep saying it we don't know what the fiscal outlook is going to be right and that's and that's true whether it's this year or next year correct and that's why i keep saying you know yeah they they're guaranteed they guaranteed us the grant so on and so forth but there's all you never know what's going to happen at the federal level that the money's not going to come down from there to the state well, and even 10%, you know, when we're starting to count pennies here, right? we should, we should be lot. paying attention to that. Yep. But, well, except for the 10%, but, that would be, the, uh, the but it can be in kind. Be in kind. In kind. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. Yep. Right. But if something happens and we don't get reimbursed for the 180 or 160 or whatever it is, we're screwed. Well, not really. It becomes an issue between us and the state and the contractor and the contractor's gonna have to wait. You know, we don't pay them up front, right, Toby? Um, well, it depends. Sometimes we do a fifty percent down payment, that kind of stuff. I mean, it there it all depends on how we, do, um, you know, who we choose as the contractor and what they're asking for when uh, when they um, sign up. Okay, so you'll get back to us with more information about the guardrail stuff um, when we have people to pick from for the RFP. Right. Well, I mean, I can. So uh, I'm looking at the grant application. It's one hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars. That's the total that we've asked for for the grant. So we yeah. have we have been we have been awarded one hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars. But if the total project comes in more based on this new barrier thing, Jersey barrier stuff, it's going to up the price. Right, but there may be, again, everything is, well, I, you I know, it's a, shot, it's a shot in the sky and based right. on numbers and quantities. And if everything goes super and somebody's selling us the culvert cheaper because they're trying to do, I mean, there's all kinds of factors. Of course, yeah, of course. That are unknown. So you can't really predict one way or another. And if we put it, I mean, we put stuff out to bid um, and people have come in twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 over our estimate and we've decided not to go ahead because we can't do the work for the money that we have in, the, in, our, in hand. So right. well, and people until, might... we, until we get the bids in hand, there's no idea whether or not it's going to be a, a above or below that number. And we might get good bids because people are looking for work. There's no way to know until we put it out. So that's, right. that's the next step is to put it out. Okay, so is the select board as a whole good with this process? Are we, we're just waiting to hear and then we'll, Toby, you'll eventually be looking for a formal vote on some choice. Well, right. so essentially right now, the only solution that we have is the concrete barrier right now, the Jersey barrier. If there's an option, we'll, we'll offer it to you. But right now that, that other option doesn't exist yet. Is us waiting to make that, to endorse the Jersey barrier? So you, we've got your back on that, going to hold up the RFP? No, not at all. Okay. So we'll just wait, you know, I'll just, as soon as we get a confirmation, if there's an option, we'll let you know, or if there's no option, we'll let you know, and you can just give us the go ahead to put out, the, put it out to bid. Okay, Alfie, you want, Alfred, did you want to say something? Uh, no, I was going to chime in when we were talking about the money for the guardrails. Yeah. Um, when we, when we put an estimate in there, there's already guard money in to pay for the guardrails in the the original estimate, so it's not like the Jersey barrier is, is a complete overcharge. Yeah, it's you know it's going to be there's money in there for for some sort of guardrail. Um, so I don't think we're talking about extra money with the with the Jersey barriers. Okay, well I guess we'll wait and see what what news the RFPs bring and if Doug Newton comes up with a another solution. Okay, so in addition, um, in order to get the stream permit, we need a temporary um, easements from landowners because we are outside the right of way where we're doing some work. Who are the and, landowners? Uh, I don't know their name. Alfie might know their name. It's the guy who wants the farmhouse right there. Oh, Mike Bettitz? 
Yeah, and then across the road, Alfie knows who they are. I don't. Dale, Dale LaFerrier. Yeah, okay, so, when, Wendy and Dale. Right. So yeah. we just so we need a document to offer them uh, so we can get a signature on temporary easement. We also need a permanent easement from Bedit because there's a little corner of the stream that we'll have to um, harden with stone that's on his property and outside the right of way. So um, I'm asking permission to get Jim Barlow to draft those documents for us so we can get them signed in preparation for getting it uh, permanent. Yeah. Final permit. yeah. Um, so the temporary easements, once the project is done, it reverts back to the landowner. It's just an e easement to be able to work on their property, to get machinery and stuff on their property. It's not- okay, So we're not taking any of their property? No, it's just permission to do work while we're off the right of way. But the Bettit's piece, there is a piece where it would be permanent? That's correct. It's, a, it's just a small little section on a corner of the stream that we have to harden the bank because it's such a, a steep slope that we have to harden it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it sounds like we need Jim to draft up some documents. Um, yeah, and I'm happy to deal with it. I just need your permission to talk to him. Fine by me. Ron, Rose, Sharon, Cliff, Cliff's a thumbs up, Sharon's. Yeah, not fine everybody. with me. Yeah, go. you got the go, Toby. Okay. Bless you, Katie. I missed that. <laughs> it's a All video. Right. This is a visual. All right. Anything else on that, or do you want to, or can we move on to the next item? Nope, that's fine. That's all I needed on George Road. Okay, so you'll stick around to. Yep. Talk this up. Okay, so we had done, we had revised and extended the stay, stay home. You're on call memo, and remember, I said let's not do it to May 15th. Let's do it to April 30th because I was thinking something might happen before then and it has so that apparently crews of up to five can be on job sites as long as they're able to do social distancing which is the six foot rule they have adequate means of um being able to wash their hands all that stuff i just actually sent everybody a document i cut and pasted from the vosha online training guide some highlights and I just sent it to everybody, it's in Word. Um, but Judy's taken the course and I think um, Barbara did as well, the online course, because somebody on site has to be the safety officer. We don't have staff available to come to the garage two or three times a day. And, we need, and we're gonna need a checklist for every day. So I was thinking about, um, some kind of a spreadsheet that in the morning, um, you know, you check off this at noon, you check off. And when everybody's ready to leave to go home, you check off. So that's kind of the starting of this discussion. Um, so I'm assuming, so Toby, that you've probably taken this online thing too. Yep. So my question is, um, Alfred, are you able to take the online training? It's not, it doesn't look very difficult. Um, you have the computer at the garage that I think you could do it on. Uh, yeah, I, I would imagine I could do it. Yeah, yeah I, I, mean, I can't see, I can't see where you would have a problem with it. It's pretty straightforward. The spreadsheet I'm thinking that it's rolling around in my head is just a pretty simple one with the day's date who the safety officer is, the initials of the safety officer. Um, you know, these are the things that you check for. Does anybody have any of the following symptoms? Are you able to um, maintain the six foot distances? You know, um, access to the restroom, access to cleaning supplies. Um, I'm not quite sure how we're gonna get cleaning supplies because they're in short, short supply. And then we have the mask issue, which you can wear the cloth masks. And I know that there are several people in town making the cloth masks, that if everybody had two masks and they took one home at night and washed it, <coughs> or some, somehow you, you wash them and bring them back for use the next day. 
it's, it's just things like that that we need to put into place. What are folks, <clears throat> what do you think about that? I'll make a spreadsheet. You will? Okay. Is it, so is the idea to plot these points on from that document you sent, Denise? Yeah, you and, and I can, you, well, you and I can maybe chat about it because I've got some ideas about what the points are if you want. Uh, why don't, if they're different than what's on this, it, the fastest thing to do is just go through and highlight what you want in it and I'll just cut and paste and make like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I can make a spreadsheet. Well, too, but well all if, right, then that's if great. You want, if you want to do it, that's fine too. I'm, I'm trying to get clear on having looked at this document. Is your vision that each of these points is a cell on the... Well, we need to have, we need to come up with, and I've got a, you, you saw the email I sent to Joel and to the league asking them, are there some kind of posters that we can post about proper hand washing that you can, we can put in the, in the restroom at the garage? Um, there's got to be some kind of posters or something that we hang up. We don't want to have to go through a checklist every day of, did you wash your hands when you came out, before you came out of the bathroom? We don't want to have to do that. So we just, we need to see if we've got a way to get some kind of posters made. And I'm assuming there's got to be something out there or else somebody else has already done it. So we don't need to reinvent the wheel. The daily checklist would be checking. And I don't have a, I ordered one of those handheld thermometers that you just put up to somebody's forehead. I ordered it like a month and a half ago and it still hasn't come. So I don't see how we're gonna be able to take everybody's temperature. In one place, it says you have to do the temperature check and another place it says it's optional. Well, it says where feasible. It doesn't say it's optional. It says where, where feasible. feasible. So I guess it's not feasible if you can't get a thermometer. Well, but I guess we still have to institute that as soon as we do get a thermometer. And where are we going to get um, cleaning supplies? I mean, I've got bleach here, but I don't, I don't know if I have enough bottles with sprayer things to make. I could make up some solution, but I don't know if I have enough spray bottles. Well, well, Barbara was, had, had asked, and I had made a suggestion about getting in touch with Swish White yeah. River. And I am assuming that they do have a product and we could order it. Because it seems like we would need a bottle of hand sanitizer like in every truck. We want to make sure that the guys don't use the break room, that when they're eating lunch or whatever, they have to have their chairs six feet apart. Those kinds of things, Sharon, is what I'm thinking that we would check off each day. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so the things that are like think uh, restroom checklists that you see at Maple Fields kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. This is how you properly wash your hands. Rose? It, um, while you were talking about it, I just went online to Google Images and I just typed in COVID-19 posters for workplace. Oh, and good. there's a bazillion of them and they're all right there. They tell you what to do, how to wash your hands, oh, social good. distance. All you have to do is hit Google Images. Okay, good. I'll try that because maybe we can just order some or print some off. Barbara's print really some good. off. Yeah, I Barbara's really good at um, oh, doing stuff like that. Judy, would that be okay if Barbara did something like that? That's what I was going to suggest. Uh, she's she's good at finding and printing posters and creating posters, and I think that would be a great thing to just delegate to her. Okay. Yeah, just tell just tell her Google Images, COVID nineteen posters for workplace. Okay. And, they're all right there. <laughs> Great. Good idea, Rose. Thank you. Okay, so it sounds like we have a plan. Um, the guys are supposed to come back as of April, after April 30th, so that would be Friday, um, May 1st. What, what are your thoughts, Alfred? Um, well, the one concern that I have is going to be time. I mean, if if they, I mean, they want every surface in the shop cleaned three times a day or three times per shift, somebody's going to be doing a lot of cleaning. 
And well, yep. if it's, I mean, if that is, if that's asked of me, I'm going to be falling behind on some of my regular duties, you know, such as answering the phone, talking to people, you know, looking at projects, managing. I mean, it's going to be a fair amount of work. I just fear, you know, me falling behind if I'm out there running around with a, with a rag and a squirt bottle um, to cover every surface. I mean, and then you've got the whole issue with the tools. You know, guys are going to be using tools to work on the trucks and whatnot. Uh, I mean, it just, it's going to be a lot of, a yeah. lot more work. And I just want everybody to know that, you know, there are going to be some things that are going to fall behind because of it. So let me ask you a yeah. couple of questions. Can the guys wear plastic, those, you know, those gloves like doctor's offices use, can they wear those when they're using tools? Yes, of course. And we, we have some there and they, they don't have a problem using them, but it's still, and, and you know, and the masks will help also, but it's still, you're still touching things. You know, if you're working in the shop, you're still going to be touching things. Even if you're, you know, you got your glove on and you wipe your nose or you wipe your face, it's still, there's your germ. And, you, and then you go back and touch a wrench. You know what I mean? It's, so, it's, so uh, so there's no way to set it up so that each crew member has their own spot to work in with only using uh, tools that they touch. I don't know how that works. Well, I mean, not really. I mean, all the tools that are, they're all in one location pretty much. And they're all, you know, on that workbench. So it's, it's where we're, everybody goes to when they need a particular wrench. Yeah. So we're going to need we a could, lot of Clorox pull up, wipe things. Yeah, no, I think the, the, the wipes are definitely going to be handy for this type of thing, but you know, I don't, I don't know where you can get it. I, I mean, I've looked for them in some of the, some of them, some of the stores and you can't find them. They're, they're, right. they're sold out. Yeah. I mean, I have a small supply here, but it's really for home use, but if we could find a way to get some of those Clorox pop-up things, those are fast. You know, I've even just used those to taking them with me to like the grocery store and wipe my hands and push the cart with the wipe. Right. Right. So, um, so the other issue on surfaces is they actually need to be clean before you disinfect them. So I would suggest that we hire a cleaning service to come in and actually do the bathroom, the office and the break room and clean it uh, right down to the T because wiping Lysol on a dirty surface doesn't really get to where it needs to get. And, you know, how often, do you how often do you have to do that, Toby? Would this just be an initial cleaning you're talking about? Well, at least initial, and it might be once a week because, you know, as the trucks drive in and out, there's a lot of dust that moves around and gets yeah. in places. And, you know, it's, um, I think it's asking a little much of the guys to sort of do head to ceiling cleaning every, yeah. every time or whatever. Um, uh, you know, that's, that's the standard they're looking for if we're going back to work in order to have a safe workplace. Mm -hmm. um, I there's know, a, there's I know a group in, there's a group in East Montpelier, Green Home Solutions. I've met uh, Julie Brown is one of the owners and they are expanding their workforce and reducing their prices to be available for the sort of work Toby's talking about. I don't know if other if there's there's probably others too. Yeah, I know. SRG, SR Janitorial does the deep dive stuff as well, but um, we need to we need to have somebody check out getting some kind of at least a, a, an initial deep clean. I think Judy said Judy learned that there's a difference between sanitizing and disinfecting, and disinfecting is um, preferred. Correct, Judy. Dis Judy, disinfecting is the. Uh, I think that was somewhat that was Barbara, and I, I'm not sure you know when one is required and when the other isn't. Right. Well, I guess we need to check that out. Um, I, if, if you want me to check out the place in East Montpelier, what was the name of that place, Sharon? It's called Green Home Solutions. I'm on their website now. Um, at the top, they yeah they go through level one general disinfection, level two enhanced disinfection, 
Okay, level. I could give them. I yep. could give them a call or contact them on email. See what it would, what the cost would be, and you know, if they were to do follow ups like every week or something, what that would be, and get you know, get back to the board with that. And then Sharon, you're going to develop that checklist. Um, and then we need to probably decide, are we going to really want them to come back to work on Friday? That's probably not going to give us enough time to do a disinfecting clean thing. So we might have to extend, I don't know till when, but I could find out when those other cleaning people are available. So we might have to do some kind of memo again once we get some more information. Does that sound satisfactory to everyone? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, can we just, I would love to, Alfred, are you still there? Or are you the one that I, we hear on another call? That sounds like Toby. No, no, I'm still here. What do you What's think, Alfred? The, yeah, just general. How are the guys going to feel about these these standards? And I'm where, tell me about the balance between they really want to get back to work and the, the tedium of washing the tool every time. Just uh well i haven't talked to them this week um i think that you know i think the hardest thing about this whole thing is going to be inside the shop i mean when we're out on the roads we're in our separate vehicle whether it's a truck or the grader or what it is so each guy can clean that particular vehicle that he that he's driving that's not the problem it's it's more the the bathroom the break room the the tool cabin the tool uh, bench and the tools themselves, you know, that's where the, where the problem is going to lie. Plus being, you know, in the shop, sometimes you have to be close to one another to do what you got to do. Okay. For, so that's, for, first off, they said the break room is off limits. Um, that just puts that as a non-issue. If we say you can't use the break room right now. And second, if, I don't know what jobs they would have, but they can't do something where they're closer than six feet. Well, how about changing the greater blade? The greater blade is six feet long, six feet or seven feet. Yeah. And you you can't just one guy on each end of it. You know what I mean? There's you're 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 in a little bit, and it all, it, all, it takes two guys to lift that. Right, but they're six so feet. That's just one example. I mean, there are others. There, we're going to take the wing off the graders. Um, there's, they're, they're heavy pieces. You got to have two guys. I mean, there's just times where six feet is going to be impossible. Yeah. Um, well, but that's where the face, the face mask comes in, and that's the extra right. protection there. But mm -hmm. now um, we could also yeah. see, we could also see about getting some of those shields so that when they're doing work like that, in addition to the face mask, they have those plastic shield things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have a clue where to where to locate, where to even search for one of those for some of those. But I'm get, sure they're out get there. Get them that Harbor Freight. Harbor Alfred. Freight. Yeah. Okay. Can you okay. check? You want to, can you check on that, Alfred? I can. Yeah. Okay. I you think know, Alfred. Go online while we're talking. You know. It is. This is. I think what we all haven't acknowledged out loud but we all completely understand because it's true across the world really this is a big pain in the butt it's it a is. big pain in the butt and the guys are going to have the same experiences everybody else has in their whatever wherever you are whatever your experience is it's a pain so i just want to put that out there that we know that they're not alone in the world thank you for doing it well, and I think right. we, I think the follow up memo about coming back to work, we can acknowledge that. But, you know, in every, in every sector of every place that people work, they're having to institute new things. You know, people are having to do a little bit of their own cleaning up, you know, making sure they're washing their hands, wiping down surfaces that they've touched. Everybody, if they're doing it right, is going to experience having to do this extra bit of precautions. I just wanted to say something, if I could, yeah. you know, I, I just wanted to remind everybody that um, we're all in this together. Oh, how corny is that? Yes, I know, but it's um, true. You know, but mm -hmm. it, it's true. But the other Very thing true. is, is that you really have to come into this with a level of common sense. 
And we right. know that it might take three people to change the greater blade. There's not going to be a, a police officer looking over your shoulder. The most important thing is that everybody stay well and take care of themselves and don't come to work. If you think you all of a sudden you might feel a little short of breath or you know, something's just not right. Or, right. you know, hey, maybe take your temperature at home if you're just not feeling good. So don't come to work if you're not feeling good, but um, just wash your hands. We know that this virus molecule is very, very easy to kill. It's very easy to kill with just soap and water. So, you know, before you eat your sandwich, make sure your hands are clean, you know, um, and, and just a whole level of common sense. I mean, I, I don't think I would go so far as to wear a face shield. I mean, the cloth mask or whatever, but I don't think they need a plastic shield or anything like that. Um, well, I think, I think to be, so we meet OSHA standards, we might want to have them available so that if people feel the need that they have that resource. Sure. If, if you can, yeah, if you can if get, can them, get and, them and yeah, have a surprise. Right. Or, yep. Yep. But you know, I, I just don't want everybody to feel like you know, they have to cross every T and dot every I. It's really a good dose of common sense. You know, you use yeah. a tool, you disinfect it with a, a wipe and you put it away. Yeah, no, I mean, this, there's no, there's no, nothing getting around that common sense is what we need to do, but we are required to do these, this checklist every day. Oh yeah. By yeah. So we right. just need to make sure that we're providing the proper things that people need so that they feel that their work environment is safe and that we can honestly say that we've met the requirements of the VOSHA standard to return to work. Yeah. John? John? So uh, I'm, I'm on eBay right now. I can get them for eight bucks a piece, uh, including shipping. Want me to order a dozen of them or something? Is that the, is that the plastic ones? Yep. Um, can, yeah, can you get a receipt so you can get reimbursed by the town? Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, okay. Go for can it. Can, if they have them available. We, how many? They might, they'll get broken. I'll get, maybe get, get 10 of them. Well, we got, we got four people, three four. each would be 12. 12? Yeah. Denise, can we go back to when? I'm not, did we wrap that up? You said no, we Friday didn't. might be too soon. I'm thinking Friday might be too soon. I think it's gonna depend on when we can get a contractor in to do the deep clean. That's why I suggested I would take my revolving, yeah. the revolving memo and update it and pass it around to the board and give you the information on when we could get the place clean. What tell um, Alfred and Toby know when the plates could be cleaned and go from yeah. there. And but Does starting with we're aiming, I think it's fine to say we're aiming for Monday. Yeah. So Alfred, I don't know if you wanna wait, you might wanna wait until I, tomorrow so I can see if I can get a hold of this cleaning company. And I know SNR Janitorial does it too, but they're, I don't know what they're, they had the, we had the Twin Valley Senior Center cleaned and it was the whole sanitizing thing. And that was like 800 yeah. bucks. Yeah. So it's not going to be cheap. Um, yeah. Well, well just let me know. Let me know if uh, when they need to get in or whatnot, I can let them in and show them around or whatever I got to do. Yeah. And once I find out, they're all yours. Yeah, and, okay. the other thing, and the other thing is, you might want to just for the first clean get whoever is available, and then you can price for later if somebody is less expensive. Yeah. Yeah. We just need to get it done. Get her done. Yeah. No, I think you're right. It's going to be hard to find people that aren't right out straight with yep. this well it opens up a whole new avenue for somebody looking to start a business yeah that's true yep and i'm not interested by the way <laughs> no you better not be <laughs> um so you're so you're saying uh may 4th yeah monday let's, the may let's, 4th let's shoot for monday um I'll re redo the memo that we've been using to update the guys and tell them about the spreadsheet and that you're going to be taking that class, that safety officer class online. And yeah. I, you could, I mean, what did it take you, Judy? 20 minutes? Um, it's really just reading um, some 
PowerPoint I, slides. It took, I don't know, 15 minutes. I know I, I started reading it thinking it was just information and then realized what I was reading was right. to be certified. I never, I never did. I didn't do the certificate thing yet, but I probably will. Cause now I've read it like three times. So, um, and then once you get done, Alfred, and you print your certificate, we need, you probably want to print two, one for the to hang in the town garage and one to give to um, Sandra for the human resources stuff. Okay. Yeah. All righty. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll do give it my best. All right. Let me know if you need any help. Yeah, no, I think I'll be fine. Yeah, I think you will. Uh, I think, I think Judy sent me the link anyways, so I, it's just a matter of getting it started. Right. And now, are the guys are the guys in the shop this week, or are they kind of just laying low? They they have not worked at all this this last week. I I went in today this morning to catch up with messages and emails and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but I I haven't talked to the guys. They were they they were off all last week, and I was kind of waiting to see what uh, how this discussion went tonight before I told them anything. Yeah. Um, but you're gonna send them a memo, right? So they'll know. Well, from yeah, you. I mean, if if you taught, if you want to call them and say that's what we're shooting for, so they're not surprised, right? And let them know we're going to follow up with a memo that we're going to implement this cleaning thing, and you know, just have a just just have a conversation with them, and we can follow everything up in writing. And and in your conversation, if you if you come up with any things that's kind of a we're worried about this or that, if you can let me know so I can put it in the memo so we can address it. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I can. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Anything else on this folks? Or do you want to move into Sandra's report? I'm good. Excuse I'm good. Me? Good. All right. Great. Thank you, everyone. This is quite the learning experience. Who know we'd know so much about infectious diseases and droplets and all that fun stuff and face masks. Oh, the other thing is, um, Katie, do you know who else in town's making masks besides you? I just heard from the midwives today who were like, we have so many masks now. You y'all can take a break. So I'm happy to make them for the road crew. Oh, okay. That would yeah. be great. We, you know, we'll pay you the. Oh, I don't, I, I received so many donations of thread and materials from awesome neighbors. I don't need any, I don't need money for it. Um, Alfie, you guys better let me know what you'll wear for, am I going to make, maybe, maybe <laughs> I was going to say, we green. don't want any polka dots or anything. How about yeah, some, see? how about some ones with some pink flowers on them? Trucks. Sure. Oh, trucks. Sure. No, we're really not fussy. Something yeah. dark colored would be, would be ideal. Okay. How many? Do you need? I, I have some red solo cup material. Perfect. Um, how many, what, we, what do we want? At least a couple each, Katie. So that's four. Toby, do you need some? No, I'm all set. So we need at least eight, Katie, so they can wash and then let dry. And yeah. you know, if they, they might have to change it during the day if they're outside and it gets full of dust and stuff. Yeah, so oh, the other thing, the other thing on that list is that the weather one of these days is going to be nice and you'll be able to have the garage doors open, which will help a lot. According to all the stuff I've read. So I'll right. I'll make eight this week and maybe I'll bring those so that you guys can use them. And then if you have anything you want changed about them before I make another set, you can let me know if there's any like changes to be made. Okay. That sounds okay. good. All right. Thank yeah. you, Katie. So how will you, how will you get them to me? Hmm, it's going to take me at least a couple of days. They take a while to make. Um, I'll definitely have them before Monday. What, does anyone have an oh, idea? I, mean, best? I just mean, how are you going to get them to me? I've been picking them up out of Katie's mailbox, mm -hmm. <laughs> the ones oh. I got. <coughs> okay, that's fine. Yeah, why don't I email you when they're ready, Alfie? And if, if you're headed this way, fine. Otherwise, I could leave them somewhere, too. Okay, okay. Yeah, just let me know when you're ready, and we can figure out how to, how to get them or how okay. for me to get them. Yep. That sounds good. All right, all right. great. Thank you. Thanks. Talk about teamwork. Thank you, Katie. Great teamwork, all. Thank you. Um, you need me and Alfie any longer? Um, I don't think so, unless you want to listen to the treasurer's report. No, thanks. <laughs> oh, come on. That's exciting. What's the matter with you? Uh, I, de I deal with budgets way too often. Okay. 
Okay. Thank you, Toby. Thank you, Alfred. We really appreciate it. Okay, Thank very you. good. Have a good, you know, have a good night. Thank you. you too. All right, Sandra, you're on. Can you hear me? Yes, yep. and we can see you. How are you feeling? Good. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you can hear me. Okay, good. Um, good. I'm all. We're good here. We're holed up in Berlin. Yes, beautiful downtown. No, not downtown. Uphill Berlin. Uh, uphill Berlin. Yeah. <coughs> so the report that I emailed to everyone last week uh, is a. Uh, as of March 31st, 2020. And we're expense wise on target, um, revenue wise, we're short. And we're not so short in a typical time that I would um, be especially worried. But uh, I think we're going to fall quite short of budgeted revenues. And that is because delinquent taxes at this point are dribbling in a couple thousand dollars a month where they would frequently be coming in at $15,000 a month. It's just not happening. So I do um, see that we will, it, it's conceivable that we will uh, end the fiscal year at a loss. And a loss is to be distinguished from a deficit. We learned that last year. So a loss means that we will, as a town, have expended more than we've taken in in revenues. The reason it is not a loss or that I don't, and the reason it is not a deficit, or at least I don't anticipate a deficit at this point, is because we have a fund balance to fall back on for fiscal year 20, which will end June 30th. I think where we're going to see uh, the hammer fall is fiscal year 21. And um, there may be legislation there is legislation uh, being talked about now that is focusing on whether or not for one time only, presumably a select board can take the voted budget that was approved and adjust it so that tax, the subsequent tax rate or the tax weight rate for the FY21 year can, would be adjusted downward. The thinking being that then it will be easier for folks to pay their taxes in full. So what I would say is, I, I don't know if that piece of legislation is going to pass, at, but it might be worth taking out your town reports and giving them a good look and uh, having some ideas whether or not when you meet next, it, we very well may have that legislation in place. When you meet next, you may want to have a conversation along those lines. What, what would you cut? How would you modify your budget in anticipation of revenue shortfalls? So my... my um, Sandra, can I interrupt for a second? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there a percentage that the legislature is looking for, or is I, it I don't. It's I don't know. Okay. I think they they I don't think they would dictate to the municipalities. I think they would leave it up to each municipality. And we could do that according to Jim when we asked him the other question. We could do that without holding a special town meeting. You can do that if the legislature says you can. Right. Okay. So, because the idea would be if you decided to slash your budget by 15, I don't, 10 or 15%, say, you, you could pick and choose what it would be that you wouldn't do, what projects, what grants, what's, what, what line items. And FY21, and FY21 is our FY21. final. Payment. We only have two months left in FY20. Right. So FY21 is the year that we pay off one of the loans. Um, 
right? That that was the. I, I, I can't answer that right off the top of my head. I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. I think that's what. If we're paying it. off a loan in FY21, we're still paying it off. Right. We're still that, paying that it off. That wouldn't in be FY21. something. I mean, it's not. It, you would look at your budget and you would decide if you would trim it in some way. Yeah. My, then, rec my, my recommenda recommendation, my recollection is that we were going to finish paying off something before we were doing, and it was big, before yeah. we did uh, FY22. So, and I don't remember what that, I don't remember off the top of my head either. And it is not any information that I have at hand. It would be in your, it would be in our budget. Yeah. Books. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it was the loan that we, the loan, one of the loans we took out for um, one of the loans. I'm pretty sure it's FY21. I think we're remembering correctly, Sharon. But it, the fact that you're paying it off, it's still Doesn't in your it. budget to right. pay. So in FY22, you won't have it, but right. I'm, not, I'm not sure I follow that I'm, I'm just thinking out loud that's all okay i think the question no i think the question if i can connect the dots is when in the next fiscal year do we pay it off well, I, if, I don't know I, i'd have to um, look um, right no of course you of course you don't know yeah. right now but that might be that's the question that's coming to mind if if we knew when we were budgeting this year that by next year's budgeting we would have that loan paid off then the question is when Right, because well, that. But, but you still, you still have to have the, you still have to have the money in the budget to pay it off. Is what Sandra's saying. Right, yeah. and we would have budgeted only to pay it off, so it doesn't, it doesn't free anything up in this fiscal year, or the next it, one. That's right. Yeah. It's, it's not going to free anything up in this fiscal year. So I, can I just year, or the I next one. To, I got I it. Yeah, need, yeah, yeah. I just need to interrupt for a minute. Doug Newton is on, and we've kind of already talked about all the guard. The Jersey barriers and all that, and Toby was going to connect with Doug. Um, does anybody want to ask him anything while he's here, or should we let him get on with his evening? Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Doug. I think Toby's going to be in touch. Oh, okay, thank you. All right, thanks for joining us. You can stay if you want. Uh, you no, I'm all set. Thanks. <laughs> good to see you. Uh, good to see you. Take care. You too. Thanks. And also, I see Bill Powell's on. Good evening, all. Good evening, Bill. How are you? Hi, Bill. Fine, thank you. Did you have anything in particular you wanted to talk to us about? No, thanks for asking, Dee. I'm just uh, lurking. Okay, you're just you're, you have your board. You you have your board, and this is a way to have your entertainment. Uh, multitasking, actually. Thank you. Okay. All right. Sorry. Go ahead, Sandra. So. Um, where I see that we're we can't it's it's an un, we're in uncharted territory. I, I don't think I have to say that. I think we all know that, but I, I think I would like to preface my remarks with that. Uh, we have a lot of payments that come due early in the fiscal year. And that and that is, and that is what I'm hoping is that we will have a sufficient fund balance to pull us through that, and we do, and we have because we do. That it is likely that that fund <coughs> balance will not will it will sustain us through the end of this year, and there will be fund balance left over to get us <coughs> to the first tax payment. The first tax payment, however would appear to be delayed. And we do not know how delayed that will be. The listers are committed to working as, uh, as close to a normal schedule as possible, but they also have limitations. They have limitations to access our office. They have limitations and the ability to inspect uh, their the state does not have a base tax rate just yet. So there are many factors coming into play that do not, are not, we cannot predict at this point in time when we will have an educational tax rate. I am hopeful that we will be able to get our bills out by the end of September. And what I don't know 
is what our collection is going to look like at that point. Yeah, it could be. So, and yeah. that's and that's the tough part, and that's where the, the you as a board are going to have to be thinking about what you may or may not, uh, it, whether or not you're going to want to adjust your budget going into FY21 if you have legislative authority, and if you don't have legislative authority. Um, I would say you still need to be thinking about that. Yeah. Because I suspect we are going to not collect the taxes to cover the budget that is proposed for FY21. And that, you know, and that snowballs into our, you know, what do we do? How do we not a tax sale? our neighbors, we don't want to do that. It, the, the tricky piece here, I, and I say this with respect to our community, is that there are a number of folks, or let's say parcels on our delinquent tax list that are repeats. And they go back years and that's, they're there and they're always there and they end up finishing up their tax obligation before the end of that particular fiscal year. But I don't know how this particular situation will affect any one of those folks. Remember, our delinquent tax situation is not the result of COVID-19. Our taxes, these taxes were due on November 15th. So, as, and as I said, there are a lot of repeat parcels um, on that list. And um, it, it very well may be that a certain percentage, and I don't know what that would be, I, I wouldn't even take a stab at it. it. It may be that a certain percentage of those repeaters are still gonna be able to pay. They're just on a different uh, fiscal timeline than, than our tax due dates. So I really see FY21 as the place where we're going to feel the pinch. Uh, the earlier we can get our tax bills out, the better we'll know more after that collection process exactly where we are. And I don't think I'm saying anything different than any other treasurer is saying to their select board at this point in time. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, I mean, and that's why we really need to think about things that we do, renovations or painting or anything like that. We really need to take a close, close look at that. I, I would very much recommend that you each, you know, you each go home and you take a look in your town reports and you, and you just take a look at them, refresh yourselves. Uh, you take a look at your special articles. There are some large ones. And think about if you have legislative authority to trim the amount of expenses that you're going to be dividing by the grand list, what, what might you think we could forego entirely for FY21? The other piece might be what could we put off until right. we see what our tax collection result really looks like by November 15th. Right. I had a, a, a nice conversation with Scott Bassage today. He brought me up to speed on the two um, CLG grants, one for East Callis, and that is a second CLG grant and one for Adamant. He estimates, uh, first of all, the funds are federal funds, uh, the reimbursements, and they are uh, separately set aside. They can't be spent or invaded by the state of Vermont. So he feels confident that we will be reimbursed, the money will be there. He's thinking that we'll have $6,000 in grant expenses before June 30th. So that's, that's really not that yeah, that's, this, that's this fiscal year, so. That's this fiscal year. It, it looks like uh, the George Road grant is going to be quite significant. 
but that's going to hit in the summer of fiscal year 21, so early. And we're going to have to figure out how to fund that. And we're going to have to see that it is possible, and, and I just don't know, but it is possible that we, will, we would need to take a significant uh, tax anticipation note in order to um, in order to fund that, I don't know what condition our fund balance will be in at at that in in July or August. Well, the federal government, the whole federal government piece, makes me a little nervous. It's kind of hard to know what exactly could happen. They you know they can say all they want that this money is going to be there, but how do we, I mean, we have no guarantee. I guess we just have to take a chance. Well, to, as Toby said, um, you're going to have to see what the RFPs come back as. He's got $165,000 and a promise. The town has to kick Thank up you. 16 five. I, I think that would be the way it would work on um, as a match typically mostly in labor or in equipment usage. So that's not really any more money out of pocket than already is in the budget, but where, where what we have to be cognizant of is that we're gonna have to pay the contractor. They're not gonna, I, I could be wrong, but I don't imagine they're gonna wait nine months until we're reimbursed or six months. I no, think. they're not. They can't. Well, they can't. They have no. to pay their. They have to pay their employees. Moreover, up to this point in time, all grants that I have seen require proof of payment before we can apply for reimbursement. Mm -hmm. So once again, we're gonna be paying those contractors before we can ask for reimbursement. we're gonna to have to see how it plays out. Right. If we have $250,000 left in our uh, general fund balance, it, it, you know, we're gonna, that is gonna be the source of funds for that particular project. Well, I'd like the select board to, we don't have to do it right now, just mull it over in your head, you know, is it worth, taking the chance on doing this project on George Road. There's another project, a grant project, that we don't have to, it's through CBRPC, it's the one that we've been working on with Pam DeAndrea, the East Callis Moscow Woods project. We don't have to come up with any money for that. Our crew and use of our equipment will go towards helping CBRPC match the grant of money. So that's a project that doesn't, no, there's no money out of our pocket. It's just use of equipment and, and staff time. Well, these are, these are the questions that the board would be, you know, might consider asking themselves over the next couple of weeks as we see what latitude the legislature, legislature is going to extend to municipalities. Do, and we know, do, they, we know, do we know when they're taking up that legislation? Oh, and then John has a question. It, it's ongoing right now. I don't know. Go ahead, John. When. Um, so thank you, Sandra. That's really informative. And, you know, uh, as bad as things may be right now, if they're going to get worse, they're going to get worse down the road. And Worse might mean the state pulls in its belts and says, we live with the roads we have and we make do and we slow down and hit potholes on Route 14. Okay. Oh, wait, that's what we're doing now. Um, and uh, I, I could see this kind of money that we're, that's been, a, it's already been awarded to us. It's just held in escrow. Right. Um, that I think it, we need to get this done. Um, it's no big deal taking out a note. It's not that expensive to take out a note. I think we do it and it's, it gets a hundred, it's, it's free in the end. If we pay a few hundred bucks in interest, what a deal. I think we'd be remiss not to seize this, particularly in light of what is potentially impending. 
Um, I, I think it's it's it would be foolish to do otherwise because uh, next year that money may not be there. I yeah. mean, the feds have other priorities. They're going to fund the state AOTs uh, based on a different formulary given in going to a depression. Um, there's a lot of shenanigans going on down in Congress. Uh, Mitch McConnell's talking about no longer or not doing anything to uh, kind of help the north, the northeastern states out. He's playing politics. That's not where the votes come for, from generally for the Republican Party. Um, so this is going to get ugly. And I really think that if there's money set aside for us with our name on it, that we should utilize it. That culvert is really problematic. It's it floods the road washes out all the time. And if we can get that baby fixed, that'll be really important to our infrastructure. Okay. And also wasn't wasn't Mitch McConnell the one who said states should file for bankruptcy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's well okay. he's saying that uh, because just just to be clear, John, I, I am not lobbying one way or another. I, I am just setting out information. I'm happy not to have to make any decisions, but I don't want to come back to you folks and you'd be surprised or be unprepared. So the purpose, my, because it had I, if I was just about to say, we're gonna come through this and we really have to operate, pardon the expression, you've heard it over and over, I'm sure, we don't want to operate in fear. We want to operate in love. And we want to understand that we're going to come through this and, and go on. My, I'm only delivering information and, uh, and that's all. And, and, and all I'm asking the, the board, board to take that information and act on it as, as you see fit to serve your constituency. So what I'm asking the board to do is just to think about it. Yeah, that's, think, that's just think it. about it. Right, right. Can we can we schedule Denise? I don't, you must keep a tracking sheet of things to talk about. But can we specifically put this on the agenda? I mean, our memories are not. It wasn't very long ago that we were in a very deep dive on budget, and we had an actual list of things that we could take out to meet our numbers for the for next year. So I'd like to go back and recreate that list before I lose the notes or forget about it. Yeah, we can put it on for next. Um, I usually keep a list of things to put on for the next agenda. So this can be one of them. Well, and in, I guess in conclusion, just be reminded as we had permission not to have to buy that chipper, if, if you can't adjust your, but if, if, the legislature does not give municipalities the authority to adjust their budgets. You, your tax rate would reflect what was approved at town meeting, but you can decide what you're going to spend as the information becomes available to you. So again, these are things you might say, well, what could we put off? What, what might, might we want to put off just in case we're really looking at a four or five hundred thousand dollar shortfall? Yeah, I mean it's all it's all good advice. We really have to be really really careful, and some of this stuff might be painful. Um, and you know we need to be thinking about our taxpayers and how they've been hit by this, their jobs, their income, their health. We have a huge responsibility here. That's all I'm asking. All right, anything else? Anything else for Sandra? Judy, you thank you. Anything? You want anything you want to thank weigh you. in on, Judy? Um, just in terms of the budget, um, I'm just wondering if there will be people asking for abatements next year. You know, probably. And so yeah. that it's not just balancing the budget from our view, but anticipating people who've lost their jobs or whatever coming to us asking not to pay and us yeah. having to decide um, that so I, it would be I, yeah. less painful if we've already made the cuts ahead of time 
Well, and mm. I've already thought about, we could have a huge abatement request out there. Right. The abatement, in fact, could, we may see requests for abatement of the FY19 delinquent taxes that are currently outstanding. So we're at about $94,000. So when we come to the end of the fiscal year, what we do is we say you pay up in 30 days or your parcel is turned over to the attorney for a collection, which may include a tax sale. And that generally shakes loose a, a very large percentage of whatever is outstanding. And it may be at that juncture that we would see requests for abatement, and not only at that juncture, but then again for the FY21 um, tax effort. Right, um, yeah, I mean, people that are delinquent in FY19 or 20, it's not a result of the COVID, but it still might be affecting their ability to pay now. Exactly, because these taxes were due in, 2019 in November, but their ability to pay by June 30th, which a large percentage of them are kind of on that schedule, it certainly, certainly could be affected by COVID-19. So right. what, what we're hoping or what, what I am hoping at, at, in my forecasting is to avoid a deficit by FY22 because that would require us either, it, let's say the deficit is $50,000, we'd have to pop that right into the budget or we'd have to take another deficit loan. And by FY22, I do believe we have paid off our deficit loan. Well, that's the one I'm thinking about. And then I think Sandra, uh, Sharon and I are thinking about th that same loan. But we John, John had one. John, did you want to say something? I thought I saw your. Yeah, yeah. Well, just a clarification. Sandra said, uh, uh, you, I think she meant FY20, not FY19 taxes. No, I meant FY19. So we're in our second year oh. of late taxes. No, yeah, you are so you are correct. I should have said FY20. Right, because they were due in November, and that's yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, I misspoke. If we were yes. two years behind, tax years behind, I would really be scared. I didn't realize no. that. Okay. We are hey, not Katie, two years. Katie, we have six thousand dollars outstanding in two in the FY19. So what I, what I would hope to see is that we don't have two deficit loan payments and in FY22 or whatever. We we really want to hope that not to have our budget reflect that just for the for our taxpayers sake. So we're going to have to just you guys will have to pay attention. Yep. I think I think we're paying attention. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, anything else for Sandra or are we ready to let her get on with her evening? Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you Sandra. Nicely done. Thank again. you Sandra. Thank you Sandra. You're welcome. If you have questions for me, such as what are we going to be paying off or what are the net big things coming up, I, I invite you all to um, send me those questions and I can either uh, write answers for your next meeting or yeah, attend let's... your next meeting and have the answers for you. Right. And if anybody has a question like that, um... It would be good to get it to Sandra so we can all have the same information and know, know the same questions and know the same answers. Denise, um, on this topic of budget, uh, does anybody, I think we had a, a note or an email from Jim about what the legislature is considering. I just quickly pulled up the bill to look at it. The one that I found allows us to adjust the tax rate, but I didn't see it allowed us to adjust the budget. Am I well, remember, the... remember, remember, we had the question about the chipper, and right. Jim Barlow said you're not asked if you if you decide not to spend the money, basically there's no harm because we're okay. So, but if we were trying to increase the budget without a vote, you can't do that. That's kind of my um, non-legal terminology. Well, you would if you adjusted the tax rate. So, the budget as it. The proposed budget that was voted on at town meeting 
or FY21 is going to result in X tax rate. If right, you right, adjust right, right. your tax rate below that, you'd have to do it. Well, it would be a good idea to do it because you knew exactly what it was you were not going to pay. There would be a thought right. process behind the numbers that the auditors would be looking for. You just wouldn't slash it by two cents and say, well, we'll figure it out later. No, no, no. no. Den no Denise, answered, Denise answered my question. We, have, we already have the authority to reduce the budget if we choose to. And the legislation is to match our, is to, is to add a companion ability to reduce the tax rate to match a budget that we create. Right, because we, we talked about not purchasing the chipper and Jim right. said that was fine um, right. because it's not increasing the tax. It wouldn't increase the tax rate. Nobody's gonna complain if it's decreased. Right, okay, That's, that, that totally answers it. And it was uh, moved on? today to the house for, from the Senate. That it went, say, say that again, Sharon. It went from the house, to, from the Senate to the house today. They suspended all rules in the Senate and sent it over to the house. So it could happen quickly. Let's hope. Yeah, John. Well, and uh, may, maybe it was done uh, in not the a wholly legal fashion. Waterbury cut its tax rate by four, five cents already. So and the, the the, but did uh, they have a plan of what they were what services they were cutting to come up with that i i don't know it was just a dev snippet you know that waterbury yeah. yeah. reevaluated the upcoming uh fiscal year's budget and they made some cuts which resulted in a five percent decrease in mm -hmm. uh the tax rate the Im impending tax rate the bill the bill number fyi for people who like to play at home is s344 s Three, four, S. four, and that's S, S as in Senate. Yeah. Um, three, four, four. Okay. All right. I might give it a quick look later. All right. Anything else for Sandra? No? Thank you, Sandra. Right. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. All right. Um, Town Hall RFP. Oh, there. Judy's still here. Cliff? Yeah. You all saw the, we talked about the town hall RFP. You saw where Cliff added some language. I don't know if everybody had a chance to look at it. I did put it in the folder. Um, let me bring it up here. And that was, no, don't, let's forget, don't forget, we asked, originally we put in the warning 30,000 and the voters graciously upped that to 50,000. You'll remember at town meeting. Mm -hmm. So the original RFP, what I did, I'm gonna share it here with everybody. I just added some language. You can see it there in red. Um, that gives us an out. I, we can go ahead and solicit um, offers and bids and um, but ultimately we'll decide based on this language you know if we're going to go ahead and move forward with the project um, and we can certainly modify the language some more I did also share this with the friends of town hall and the town hall restoration committee there were there were no objections people seem to understand why we're having to uh move forward this way i also uh reiterated the language at the end of the document can you cliff the one the one minor edit i would make is that awarding the contract and commencing the project will be at the sole discretion whether okay. maybe we need to say whether whether to award the contract and commence the project yep i can we can uh, work something like wordsmith something like that into it, no problem. And so, if that is acceptable to everybody, with understanding that I'll make that additional edit, are we okay with moving forward with issuing RFP? We would. Uh, we have I already identified a few companies we want to shop it around to, and we would follow our usual process of publishing it 
in the paper and the uh, VLCT um, bulletin board. You know, and that makes, that makes me think, I wonder if we could put something like this in, if we decide to send out the RFP on the George Road project, we could ask to have something like this put in that same RFP. Absolutely. So what do folks think? Do we wanna go ahead and send this out with this caveat? As amended, as proposed tonight with the amended right. language. Could you, could you say so, again, I missed Sharon what you wanted to add. Could you say again, please? Uh, that where Cliff added the red, please yeah. note. That, so my revision would say, please note that due to circumstances re, re, circumstances related to the COVID nineteen pandemic, whether to award the contract or commence the project will be at the sole discretion of the Calis Select Board. Yeah, that sounds whether fun. that sounds whether fun. to award whether to award or commence. Right. So so with that edit, I make a motion that we authorize release of the RFP. I'll second that. Cliff, are you good with the revised language or do you want Sharon to send it to you? No, I'm good. I've got it. Okay, any, any other comments or questions on the RFP? Thoughts, concerns? Sounds good. Okay, let's take a vote. Cliff? Aye. Sharon? Aye. Rose? Aye. John? Aye. And I'm, a, I'm an aye. We just have to do a roll call vote. So that's why we're doing this. All right, the motion passes. Um, okay, anything on IT, Cliff, you wanna enlighten us about? I know you've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes and Yes, uh, a couple of things. One informational, um, we did receive a call at the uh, town office a resident who's very frustrated because they've been battling with uh, consolidated communications for a couple of years, trying to get uh, an improved internet service. And they were asking if there was anything we could do to help because They've got kids at home who need a decent internet connection to be able to do their Zoom lessons and whatnot. Um, that gave us cause to go back to Rob Fish, um, who was the gentleman who had informed us that there was an option for having um, uh, commercial grade internet Wi-Fi hotspots installed at towns that needed it. Um, so I pinged him again to see where the status was on all of that. And he said, it's possible that they may be able to push one through the goose rather quickly for us. Um, so I'll work with uh, Denise um, and also with Nick to give them the other pieces of information they need so that we can see if we can get this thing turned on sooner rather than later. One of the questions they had was if there was any other um, legislative actions that we have to take uh, that would slow down their ability to implement this system. Uh, we previously agreed that it was something we wanted to do and that we would go with um, the Tallis Town Garage. So I just wanted to throw it out there again in case there was any other concerns or questions. No, I, if, they, if, they could do it, if they could do it, quickly, that would be great because there's a lot of people that are now homeschooling that, you know, between that and their jobs, they just don't have the internet capability. Right. And, and, this, would, and, this, and this would be the free one, right? Yes. Okay. And uh, East Calis is one of the areas we identified where there was uh, fewer hotspots available for the public. There are also some other options that uh, Rob Fish told me that they could look into for us. Uh, Verizon has something they're offering with mobile hotspots and whatnot. <laughs> we'll keep everyone informed as as it progresses. Yeah, and so we can do another update at our next meeting. Yep. Anything else on IT? Yes, the other thing is, is last time around, we discussed having this uh, slingshot connection between the town hall and the town office that would give us another uh, backup system 
uh, because our backups aren't with the limited bandwidth we have at the town office. Our backups that occur in the evening aren't always going through 100%. Um, sometimes it's only 80%. Sometimes we get lucky and it does get the 100%. But we really need to have this extra layer of backup to ensure that uh, we have done performed due diligence on maintaining the data that we're required to maintain. And this is, um, a, this is a security issue, right? It is a bit of a security issue. Um, there is a liability that the town could face if there was something horrendous happened, like if we got hacked and we got locked out of our system. Uh, the backup is what us allows us to avoid having to pay the ransom. So, and, so that, and that's the roughly $2,000? $2,200 is the uh, bid price that um, we got from RBT. Um, there is, it turns out, a possibility that we will qualify for uh, assistance as a, in the form of a grant that will cover about $1,000 worth of that. Uh, Sandra looked into that for us. Um, VLCT says it's kind of new ground for them to offer these grants for the IT uh, security, but they didn't see anything on the surface that made it look like the project wasn't, wouldn't qualify. So, so, go ahead. So I was going to say, John's got his thumbs up. Does that mean you want to make a motion, John? <laughs> my connection's unstable, like my brain. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll move that we uh, uh, move forward with that project and fund it at twenty two hundred dollars. Or what? I don't know if it's exactly twenty two, but it's well, right well uh, what, up to twenty two hundred dollars, or in the ballpark. Uh, yeah, it's dollars, and the understanding we might receive some grant money. How about and we it say might we? Come up less, it might you, be a few dollars more. How about you say based on the quote from RB Tech? Right, that was twenty two hundred dollars, wasn't it? It's just shy of twenty two hundred dollars. If you want to give me a minute, I'll get you the exact amount. And that we apply for the grant as from VLCT? Is that what you said? So the, the VLCT grant, if we qualify for it, would be up to $1,000. Not guaranteed that that's going to happen, but that's, that's what it could ultimately be. The total quote from RB Tech is $2,164. Katie, can you read back the motion? Yes. Um, John Brabant moved that the town move forward with the project and fund it based on the quote from RB Tech, $2,164, with the understanding the town apply to the grant from VLCT, for the, for the grant from VLCT. For up to $1,000. Does that work, John, for you? It doesn't matter. We just apply for the grant and we'll see what we get. Yeah. Okay. So I that's think, the, Rose? I, yeah. I think in the motion or just point of clarification, you need to make sure that you get the project, what it encompasses, uh, what Cliff said. It's for backup or whatever. Yeah. Cliff can probably send you the correct wording of what, what the project is called. You don't want me to call it the slingshot project? Call it the Wi-Fi bridge and local backup project. Are you seconding the motion, Cliff? If we're okay with the language of the motion, I am definitely seconding it. Okay, are you ready to vote? Cliff? Aye. Sharon? Aye. Rose? Aye. John? Aye. And, I, and I'm an aye. So it's unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, I just wanted to make sure everybody got the note about, um, and this is under um, just my update, that we have, that we were supposed to have a quarterly meeting in April with the fire department that got canceled, as everybody knows. And it's been tentatively rescheduled for Thursday, June 11th at seven. And that is only 
like 15 days before the end of the fiscal year. So we're kind of counting on them and depending on them to stay on budget. So just if you can put that on your calendar and plan to attend if you can. Okay. Um, I'd like the board, I don't know if you're, if you're ready to review minutes, but I'd like the board to go into executive session if there's no other business or old business to discuss um, personnel matters. Yeah, I'd like I, to uh, go into, oh, okay, never mind. I was gonna make a funny, but Bill Powell chimed out. Oh. Can I, can, um, I can I make a suggestion on minutes? Yes. Um, the minutes are available online. If everybody can go in and read them and make their suggestions, then three of us can convene for 15 minutes at some point to approve them. Yeah, would you be Rather available to do that, Sharon? I'd be happy to do that, just not tonight. No, not tonight. <laughs> okay, let's plan to do something like that. But everybody needs to let let the group know that you've read them and, and so that we can get a you, smaller group ready to approve them. Because usually you can go into the, sometimes in the top of the minutes, I'll put in a comment with my name, looks good. So if anybody I, can do that and just go in and do that, then we can get three together to approve. Well, what I was saying is everybody go in and make your edits. Yeah, Let no, everyone know you've done about. it. And yeah. then, yeah. That's Send what I'm talking email, about. Because okay. everybody can go in and say, John can go in and put his name in. Looks good to me. Share, you know, we can all do that so we know everybody has looked at them. Denise, all I'm saying is I don't want to have to keep going in to look at them to see if everybody's done it. If they could just send an email and say they did it. Well, that, yeah, that would th that would help. Um, one way to help that would do by date. Yeah, by date. No, he's saying do by date. Um, can we say by next Monday? That works for me. Everybody? So to be clear, it's the minutes from February. They're all in, February. Yeah, they're all in the they're all in the folder for tonight, John. I'm looking. I'm looking at okay tonight's folder. Okay. Right. Yeah. If you go into tonight's folder, review them, put a comment. I'm looking you, at them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to chime out. Okay. Thank you, Judy. Yep. Thank you. 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 All. Hey, Judy. Thank you. Okay. We need Orca to. Oh, we disconnect. lost Bill too. Bye, Bill. We need Orca to disconnect. Orca. They can only communicate. Um, Cliff, the you can turn them off. I can. I can go ahead and uh, excuse them from the meeting. There they go. No, nope, they're still there. So we need a motion to go into executive session per um, one VSA section three one three A three. Please, that's a motion. At 8.40.